welcome back to a brand new episode of Attack on Show. As always, I'm Robbie. And I'm Jay Marsh. And we've got a very special guest. Actor, director, producer, screenwriter, MMA <laughs> uh, fighter. You do it all. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. is awesome. Family man. <laughs> Family, Family man. Dancing. Yes. Harley Wallen is here. Thank Holly. you, Harley, for coming out tonight. Thank we totally appreciate out. it. Absolutely. This is awesome. And specifically, we're here today to talk. Uh, you, you've got a long list of movies, actually, we'd like to cover. But yeah. most uh, importantly, you've got a big release with Eternal Code. August 30th. It's the, it's the theatrical My, kickoff. Uh, and uh, what's really cool is... Uh, Normally, a theater and VOD kicks off at the same time, so okay. that's so because the the theater days mm -hmm. are kind of over, so so they kick off at the same time. Most people want to sit and watch it in their you know dungeon and, right. and and have their screen and be able to sit in their underwear and watch the watch the movie. Yeah. So so uh, who wears so underwear? We're, yeah. <laughs> so we're kicking it off in theaters one week before. Oh, awesome! Because we want to get some. In all honesty, isn't it better to watch? Just it really honestly, is. There's something about the big screen that it we is. just can't we've, tap at home. We've always talked about that on the show, yeah. how really movies are designed to be seen in a movie theater, regardless yeah. of those same things. So, yeah. 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 I guess, there, and this is going to be premiering at Imagine Theaters, correct? Yeah. And, and locally will be Royal Oak? Royal Oak, Canton locally, uh, I know Lakeville, Minnesota, and whatever in Chicago. So, oh, yes. Oh, wow. Uh, yes. That's awesome. Where are you going to be that night? I'm going to be in Royal Oak. Okay, Royal so there we are. That's where we'll be that night. We'll be in Royal Oak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's Attack cool. on Show yes. Road Show. Taps is on Taps. Absolutely. I'm excited. So will you be there uh, talking to fans? And uh, that will be exciting. Is there any other cast members coming out for it? Uh, yeah, there's a fair amount of cast coming. We're going to have a big, uh, like, a step and repeat uh with a little red carpet for oh, pictures nice. and okay, all that cool. jazz. So, Man, we gotta and Royal Oak is a great yeah. spot too. Oh, oh yeah. it is. You know, if you haven't so been to Imagine out there, and they do such a good job. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I apologize, I don't remember the owner's name, but he is such Paul a supporter. Lance. Paul is amazing. amazing. Paul is yes. an amazing oh, man who's a huge yeah. supporter of um, local film, film like yes. crazy. So local yeah. art. Period. The guys. Yeah, I mean, he's. Uh, I don't know if he's a businessman or philanthropist sometimes. Kind of both, I mean, right? Really, no, really, he's absolutely. He's just an amazing guy. Yes. No, yeah. we were just talking about him with the, the Royal Star mm -hmm. uh, Film Festival. Mm -hmm. that, you know, he's hosting there. He, he's definitely yeah. excited to, to, to bring out that, the, the Michigan film. And yeah. it's, it's exciting to have that partnership with him. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, to have somebody in the business. Absolutely. Hari, tell us a bit about the film. What can we expect? What are we looking for? What kind of film are we are we discussing tonight? So I'll tell you the, the whole backstory. Sure. So... Year and a half, two years ago, I read this story on Facebook about this Italian doctor who was gonna decapitate a brainless, yes. uh, a brain dead yeah. person and this uh, paraplegic person and switch their heads. Sure, yes. Oh, okay, yes. They weren't yes. gonna sign off on doing this anywhere, so China said, we'll do it. Okay. Surprise. Leave it to China. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so, so this was scheduled to happen, they did, uh, this on deceased primates and and found that the nerve endings grew back and they oh, wow. really think that this is going to work. Possible. They're okay. going to have a medically induced coma and yada yada, sure. but they really think so. So I, my writer brain went crazy and said, oh, the holy grail. Okay. What's the next step? So in the film, we have we've done the head transplant fairly successfully. Okay. Um, but you're still dealing with an aging body and an, and an aging brain and an aging everything. So in our film, these two genetic research companies have actually figured out how to download the essence of you. Okay. And then oh. essentially insert that and take over oh, the exciting. next person. Okay. Uh, and, and that sounds great. If, you, if, if you're in a really bad accident, they can download you and they can find this brain dead person. They can plug you in. That's great. Sure. A soldier coming back from, from the war, losing limbs. We can get him back into a whole body. Great. Stem cells, we can grow a new body. Even greater. But there's always the, someone else. Yes. <laughs> but the riches of the rich. <laughs> right. There's a dark side order, to everything. Right. They order their own supermodel bodies and whatever else. Uh, and there's a waiting list and this has turned into a... A money game. Uh, financial uh, kind of thing nice. uh, instead. So the holy grail and how do we stop that and all the moral dilemmas involved with that. Oh, that sounds really cool. exciting. Yes. How does this rank up to some of the other stuff you've done up to this point? I think Is it always the next project for you or is this uh, kind of yeah, like, this yeah. is a fun one right now for yeah, you? Yeah. I, 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 I don't... 
first of all, I'm the guy like from all my martial arts days, my judo, taekwondo, and MMA stuff. It's in boxes in the basement. Nothing is out. Yeah. Uh, all my awards and stuff uh, are in boxes. Like nothing is out because it, the second you feel that you have arrived in any way, shape, or form, you may just go instead of working really hard, you go or you do this, and that's where you lose. Everyone passes you, you up at that yep. point, right? Keep going, right? Oh, so, nice. so, so, yeah, so I'm always on the next thing. But I do really love this because we have such an ensemble cast. And they were, I mean, they, they were amazing. Uh, Scout Taylor Compton from Rob Zombie's Halloween 1 and 2. Yes. She's, like, amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, she gets to play a fun character, too, which I really, really like how we... Uh, that was actually a male character originally. Oh. And... Uh, and I, I felt like the cast was so male dominated, so I'm like, I gotta, I gotta figure out a way to rewrite this. Um, but she plays a really fun character. Uh, she was amazing. Uh, Richard Tyson gets to come yep. in and be nope. his and you've worked with him in the past. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's one of my favorites to work with. He, the guy, you know, you think about he had huge hits, you know, twenty some years right. ago. Took on Arnold. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, no, it, it, yeah. and Black Hawk Down and, and all these yeah. big, big, uh, and he still gives all he's got. That's awesome. I and mean, you can see it, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't hold anything back, which is really, really nice. Uh, and then Billy Worth, I love Billy Worth, and this, I, he got great reviews after Betrayed. Uh, they were calling him, you know, uh, uh, they said he was like Clint Eastwood. Asher. Yes, he yeah. was. A, he was. Yeah. The, he yeah. was hired by the yeah. for the hitman the to mayor. find the daughter. The mayor. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. he he Wasn't was. He, a, awesome? he stood out for me in watching that movie. I thought his performance was amazing watching that. I think he's better in, in this. Eternal Code. Nice. Oh, that's, that's a high exciting. bar. Very yeah. different. Very it different is. role, but but uh, he was one of the people that got incredible praise. Uh, and Jan plays this eccentric doctor. Who lost his wife to cancer? So to to him, this is like you, you have to continue. This. He sees the good in it. Yes, only. Oh, and he's well, blind to, 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 okay. to that the it ramifications could be of it. But, yeah. but 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 even going places where it's very gray, because of him perceiving that the outcome is going to save the world. Okay, kind of like All a right. Mr. Freeze. Uh, you know, oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Great. Boy, do you know we're a bunch of geeks that you just made that <laughs> reference <laughs> and, and all three of us completely <laughs> got it. Yeah. And he was also a doctor in Betrayed as well, correct? Yes. Yeah, yep. he, was, yep. he was in it as well. I, I do like watching, you know, when you watch these films and start to see the cross-casting, mm -hmm. I do love watching it. I was actually curious if he was an actual real-life doctor at this point because he does do it very well. Do you know well. who he is? He is... Uh, the the stairmaster from the people under the stairs by Wes Craven. No. Yeah. One oh. of my favorite horror movies of all time. Holy cow! Look at that. He see? is the stairmaster. Wow. Isn't that, that crazy? God, that is crazy. I did not figure that. I out. I did watching. not. Yeah. See, I gotta go yeah. back and look Correct. that exactly. one. Exactly. Wow. Stuff. Yeah, he's a, yeah, he's a, become a really really good friend too. Jan will probably be in almost all of my movies. That's awesome. That's, That's awesome. Great when you an incredible guy. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, and he's Swedish, so, so that so helps, that don't right? Hurt. <laughs> yeah. The accent yeah, always works great on camera. Tongue, yeah. You know? <laughs> That's yeah, awesome guy. So no. what was kind of the challenges uh, bringing Eternal Code uh, compared to some of your other films? Because this does seem like it's uh, it's kind of getting like a broader horizon here that, that you're starting to reach out. Uh, yeah. Were you expecting it in pre-production or is there just something that came together? Did you together? know this was going to bump up a little for you? I mean, that's I, a goal I, in every film, think, right? But Yeah, I think I did and I think I, I kind of knew I had to. I know... You know, making a, a horror movie, you don't necessarily need that ensemble cast. You can still kind of go pretty far uh, without it. I've seen horror movies hit theaters with, like, one name that you know of. Sure. You know? No, so, absolutely. If that. So, yeah. If, yeah, if that sometimes. And and, and so, I, so I knew if you're going to go the action thriller, um, crime drama route, you you have to have some names that, that make you go, I got it. I got to see that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, well, yeah. So Absolutely. so I did know that we we were going to be playing with uh with a higher potential kind of like betrayed uh, yeah, where so, we had yeah. that ensemble type of cast. Mm -hmm. I, I knew that we would be in that range but the feedback so far was incredible. We just went down to Ohio to uh uh the Indie Gathering uh which is a, a huge festival. Um, and we just won Best Crime. So you cleaned up on some awards down oh there. God. Yes, you did. Well done. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. That that's was, awesome. Yeah, it was great yeah, watching great the progress as that went. And, and you've had some success at other film festivals, obviously, with yeah. this movie traveling around. Uh, it's been actually tricky to keep up with you because not only do you have Eternal Code out there, uh, you're also working at Abstruse, which is in post-production yep. coming out. And that's, uh, that's a film you made with Tom Sizemore, correct? Mm -hmm. Which some may know from yeah. Saving Private oh, Ryan. Yeah, and we're so kind of a Sizemore fan here on the show. Yes, we, yes. we absolutely are. Especially yeah. from Heat. I'll tell you, yes. the, the best 
natural actor I've ever worked with. Really? Ever. Ah, that's big, hands that's down. big work. Yeah, yes. He's amazing. I mean, hands down. The, yeah. he, he, there's something special about him. Uh, one thing that I have always said, uh, and this is the acting geek sure. coming, coming out, but you control your truth. That means that you learn well enough to speak so that people believe that you are who you say you are. Oh, okay. So when I say I'm a police officer, you look and go, no, you're not. That that's not Absolutely. good acting, right? But when you start believing them, but that's something that you control. That's training. Okay. Um, what you don't control is screen presence. Some people they go on camera, and you're like, they look like way better on camera. Yeah. And how does that work? <laughs> nice. And then you have some people that go on camera, and you're like, Ugh. yeah. I thought, don't they look better? Yeah, we'll you all critique yeah. this uh, in the comments right. below <laughs> on my transcript. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but he's one of yeah. them guys. He gets on camera, and you can't stop watching him. No, yeah. no, no we, and that's it, it, that's probably one of the best pre uh, representation of that or explanations mm -hmm. of that. That's really yes. well done. Oh, Thank he's you. got yeah. so many memorable yeah, performances. He does. I'm excited oh, to yeah. see this uh, with him in there. Because and, and abstruse, uh, obviously, we've got Eternal Code coming out first. Is there? Do you have a time frame as far as when yeah. abstruse will we be released? We just got the release date from. Uh, Green Apple Entertainment. Uh, it's going to be releasing on DVD and VOD at the same time, November first. Oh, November you're 1st. busy. This is a busy fall for you, then. Is you want to hear some crazy? Yes. So Enigma, the other film with T.J. Storm and Dennis Haskins, is also releasing November first. They're releasing them oh on the same day. Oh my gosh. Day. Well, you know it's what? It's a Harley Wall and Fall. Friend, it's a, yes, yeah, it's a Harley Wall and Fall. I, <laughs> yeah. I get that on T-shirts. Like that. yeah, that's that's awesome. yeah. And Dennis Haskett, you, you've worked with, in a few films with him. Yeah. A lot of people obviously know Mr. Mm -hmm. Bell from Saved by the Bell. Uh, and you've used him uh, both in Betrayed. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It was that Bennett Abstruse. song that he was in Bennett in Abstruse. Songs, yes, yes. Um, and he seems just down to earth, fun guy. Amazing. His performances, I mean... He's such a likable guy. Is that? Please tell me that's what he's like in real life. He is. He is absolutely <laughs> like that. He's one of them people that if every time I go to LA, I hang out with with Dennis. He's just. He's like, hi, right, Harley. I'm going to be in Detroit. I'm hosting an event in Corktown. Are you coming down? And I'm like, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, let's I'm do on it. my way, right? <laughs> you said yeah, you're yeah. in Corktown. I started the car. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. But no, he's he's awesome. I mean, when we were figuring out where to do the screening of Betrayed, which is one of the few films he's not in, sure, he's driving me around in Hollywood trying to find the right theater. Oh, that's nice. awesome. I mean, that's just awesome. a yeah. just awesome guy. I mean, nice. really, really good. And and he has a. Um, we did a sequel to Bennett's song called Bennett's Song Holiday, yes. and mm -hmm. that's coming out uh, uh, this this November, December. And you just got that as well. You guys are just looking We're, at the final. We are looking at final cut. We're oh, so close. Wow. Okay, awesome. I sent yeah. my editor uh, Fred Mossman. As I said, I hope this is final notes, mm -hmm. but it looks it, it's it's significantly to me. Uh, story-wise, uh, better than the first one. Nice. Really, okay, really good. good. Creative cool. question for you here. Uh, obviously, you build these relationships with acting. You, mm -hmm. you write the screenplays. You direct these films. When you meet somebody like Dennis Haskins, I, mm -hmm. I always wonder, you, you, you see the characters that he, he portrays. Does that push you, like challenge you to say, you know, I want to write something different for this guy. Like, I, I want to push this guy to a, an area that he's never been in for. Do you get that edge, and is that something maybe you're, you're looking at? Yeah, I, I think in... Enigma, the first time he worked with me, um, it's about this demon that takes people over. And uh, he's one of the first people that get taken over. And we kind of get to see him in, in jail waiting to get processed. And here's this confused old guy who's like, does he's something dark is coming. And yeah, you're like, yeah. what's going on? Uh, and that was fun. And I saw that darker side because we had a couple of times where he was supposed to be like convincing somebody else that 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 something dark was coming. So when I wrote Abstruse, uh, uh, he plays a not cool character at all. And really? okay. I'm telling you right now, he, I think he's amazing in Abstruse. I think Excellent. I think he I almost like yeah. almost steals this show from Sizemore, which that that's says a, a tough, lot. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's excellent. He is. Yeah. Do you uh, do you ever dabble in the editing process, or how how are you as far as because uh, I, I can Rob imagine, is a huge editor. Right? Yeah, I love editing. I can editing. imagine when you go from writing to directing, it's mm -hmm. got to be tricky to then give that editing process up, or oh, is that something that you're just? Well, the, here's the thing: you never give it up. Uh, so if you're a director, then you direct, you know, the editing of of the script sometimes. So you sometimes okay. direct the screenwriter. Okay. And then you direct the actors. You also direct your cinematographer. You direct your 
gaffer, usually through your cinematographer, uh, and then you direct your editor. So, so, so I mean, so I, you get to see a product and then still kind of make your notes, and, and you're still involved in the process. Well, I mean, so I so you, you direct you said, for the editing. Yeah, yeah, I direct, I direct, I direct, direct the editor. For the editing. You yeah. direct the editor in, yeah. in what you're doing. Yes. So, so I send him the, the, the script and I send him all the cuts and the cuts, you know, they can only fit so many ways. Sure. Right. Uh, so, uh, so uh, you know, I, I have a plan in mind. So, for instance, let's say that we were shooting a shot with us three and halfway into this we started arguing. We would have the master and we would be on the three shot. Uh, and that would be a great place. But when we started arguing, there would be a division somewhere. I would then divide the frame between us. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Yes. No. Absolutely. So, so, yes. so those type of things. So, so the editor is going to have to follow what I've directed anyway. Nice. Okay. And if he and if he chooses to choose a different shot, uh, I stay open to seeing you know what what his what right. he's seeing there. Uh, but generally, it, it's pretty. It's almost like a, a roadmap. You've already yeah, got so, it mapped yeah. out. So yeah. it, when you're writing the screenplay, do you write it in the in the fashion as if you're already visioning, uh, you know, you already have a vision as far as how it's going to be shot? So do you write it and kind of spell it out in the early stages as well, so you remember it later Which I on? Which I think like, is a huge advantage to you. Writing the screenplay and directing it at the same time mm -hmm. allows you to. You got to be careful though, because as an actor, you're a creative, and you don't want to, you don't want to color inside of the like you want to you want to have a blank piece of paper a so little you got to give some room. so if i just say walk up to here and then say that then i get a robot and the performance oh, is going to be okay. awful All right, okay. well, so you yeah. have to leave enough for an actor to to make the the character into a full flesh and sure. blood three dimensional creature mm -hmm. uh, and 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 that's so you should, so there's the, the trick is and 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 in in all honesty if you have a great cinematographer when he says, "Hold on here, Harley," if you're any smart at all, you do, you do this. Yeah, and oh, and listen to your cinematographer. Oh yeah. At that point. When, yeah. An actor, no, when, an act, when an actor comes and so, says, "You know, Harley, I thought about this, uh, but I think my character, like, listen, uh, uh, Agro Mosquette horror film is going to be uh, in theaters in, in February." Sure. There you uh, go, guys. That's this man literally has like the busiest <laughs> winter and fall coming up. I don't know how we got him here. We don't know how we got him here, literally. <laughs> but yeah, that that film. When when I wrote it, I did not write that to be an exotic type of thing. Uh, but but Aphrodite was playing the psychic, and she goes, Harley, I just feel like I'm from ba the Bayou or something. I feel like I'm from New Orleans. Uh, I feel like that's kind of my calling for this character. And I'm like, I didn't see that. But uh, all right. Yeah, go with <laughs> Let's it, talk right? Let's about go, this. Let's say, absolutely, so yeah. she showed me a look, and she had dreadlocks. And I'm like, love, love this. Super interesting character. Oh shoot! I'm playing her best friend, the 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 other, yes. you know, uh, uh, you know, mystic. Sure. So I'm like, no, I have to be as well. So I shaved my head. We created a full backstory to uh, that we encountered a wow. demon that's before the, that's that the ripped my eye out. So I have a big isn't... star on my face. Oh, see, but that's a beautiful part of all of this. Isn't yeah. It? That's where the creativity comes, and you don't yeah. see it coming. That's, nope. Yeah. I was I was not expecting that at all, and now that I watch the end result, I'm like, that was so meant to yes. be because yeah. it turned out a thousand times better. So, as a director, you are in charge of that red herring. Make sure that that's intact, because if you let that run off, then then you have no story. Okay. But you have to be open to some adaptation. Yeah, sure. creativity absolutely. Yeah. Be yeah. In. Okay. That's excellent. That's, That's the phenomenal. hardest part is like how, 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 when do I crush the egg and or when do I whatever, hold the tie and when do I open the hand? When, 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 when does the fall? Yeah, yeah. yeah right? <laughs> yeah, with great power comes <laughs> great responsibility. Great. Amen. Yes. No. So uh, obviously you were acting, uh, you got into the acting, uh, was was this something you'd always done or I believe I read something where you got more yeah, involved yeah. when the film incentives were Tremendous here in, in Michigan. transition for you. Uh, yeah. I had two big things first i was a fighter and a break dancer and i got on a swedish uh show oh God, break dances all we, the time we are right? totally awesome. we got so much to go from we're gonna hang out after whether right. i want to or not yeah no. so the first the first time around was uh in sweden i really had no interest in the whole acting thing i'd made some songs i'd been a, a, a break dancer and and had fun and then uh get this show where we're background people and then they said so Instead of getting an actors, you know, somebody has to buy the tanning lotion for the scene and this and that. Do you want to be the guy? And so I'm like, yeah, sure. That would be fun. <laughs> and then I started hanging out with the actors, and they're all like, 
getting into character and whatever else. And I'm like, I always thought acting was just pretending to be no, somebody. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I'm like, that's this is really cool because you get to actually like live and breathe as somebody else. Uh, so so I kind of got bit by the bug there. Uh, and I moved here to pursue acting. Okay. Actually. All right. Nice. Um, here is in Michigan? or like, Yeah, it's kind of okay. weird, actually. Uh, uh, but uh, at the time, I had a great agency in Toronto and being okay. Swedish. Sure. No, uh, incredible. And, and, yeah, and, absolutely. And Chicago yeah. as well. So this was right in the middle in, uh, in a local uh, artsy black and white independent filmmaker in Michigan uh, actually signed me to be a lead in the main uh, supporting for two of his films. So uh -huh. I'm like, I'll, I'll come here. So yeah. that was kind of how, how that started. The the going from actor to filmmaker was when they cut the film incentives. Okay, so that's when you made the transition. Because yeah. I read a great quote by you. You were sitting, I, I forget with who, yeah. and you had said, you know, we're going to keep, we're going to have to keep this going here in Michigan. And like it, it was a decision you guys made at that yeah. time of we want to stay here and we want to keep the film industry mm -hmm. in Michigan going. Yeah, I mean, it was really hard. I had just got on Batman vs. Superman uh, at two lines. Uh, and at what scene? Uh, the underground fight scene. Well, first of all, they cut the lines, and they cut one whole scene. Uh, so, so, so he, knows, one. he knows your pain. He yeah, your I pain. heard yes. so many people. Thanks, Michael Bay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, right. No. <laughs> oh no, no, that was Zack Snyder. Yeah, no, no, I was yeah. from that's Transformers. Transformers. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right, Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So I was, I was really bummed because. I was feeling like we were at least going to start getting more films here. There's so much I happening at that time uh, with the, the I, Detroit know, 187 being filmed. Uh, Batman v Superman was going mm -hmm. on. Transformers was really an fight. incredibly underrated television. Kong program. Skull Island was supposed to have been shot here too. Yeah, really? We had Red Dawn as well during yeah. the time being filmed yeah. here with. Uh, and of course, Thor White Boy Rick we would not have been shot in in, in Boston and Ohio. Correct. Yes. Uh, uh, the film Detroit was shot in Boston, Boston which is horrible, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's just we had to okay. get this back though. I mean, the opportunity has come here now, and mm -hmm. I know myself and Rob, and we've talked to some yep. other people. This is a topic that's come on our show yep. quite a bit now. Mm -hmm. This is something that definitely has to come back to to the state here. I think that there needs to be an Atlanta North, and I think we're I, perfect. I I. I I completely agree I with think, you. I yeah. think uh, we are a state that has a lot of space and have lost a lot of uh, bodies, which means that we can shut down streets right. and you this know, and, and that. So we, we live in a city you that's completely even, right. That we have a, do that can't anywhere else. Right. It would cost an arm and a leg. four miles. Yeah. I mean, you could drive four hours yeah. and be in a completely different environment that oh. no one is completely aware of. You can go mm -hmm. from the city to Detroit, really yep. less than that. Yep. And you can be in a completely and different environment. Yeah. like Plymouth, like that. Uh, yeah. Northville, yeah. 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 great you know, downtown areas. An hour mm -hmm. away, mm -hmm. great time, all these different things yep. that we're able to film here. It's yeah. an incredible opportunity for our it state. It absolutely is. I think, uh, I think we'd be stupid not to pursue this again. I understand that it's kind of paid off with the blue chip and, and going that route instead i know that that we've we're getting a google office here now yeah there's a lot of stuff. things taken so, off but i think uh i think that the film incentives are maybe a scaled down version well, we, or something yeah. like that allowing yes. you know start out smaller yeah and, two million dollars we build in, in the thing here you know two million and under and then we work our way up from there when it comes to these film yeah. incentives and just to give our local people the opportunity to really yeah the, make this the work. original uh uh the original package was never for the Michigan filmmakers. No. It was for Hollywood, Hollywood. to bring their money here. Right. But we need to... Not yeah. spend it here. Just come here, Bridge. do their filming, and then take, take off. off. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, they... It brought the a notoriety. Catering, I'm not knocking it. The, the no, hotels, absolutely. Like yes. the, the, the transportation, the, uh, all the makeup artists, all the extras. I mean, absolutely, they, they, there was... Uh, the economy definitely would be stronger from absolutely. it. Absolutely. But there are better ways to do this. I, I actually talked uh, for quite a while with Corbin Burnson about it. Credible actor as well. He was yes. in yes, Psych. Yes, he is, he uh, is, yes, absolutely. Uh, as well. Uh, he, he was in Benet's on Holiday uh, as, as our villain. And oh, man, he he's plays, a villain. He's, he does oh, play a great villain, yes. He's so yes. good. Yeah. But uh, he said, if we really wanted the money to stay, we would just fully fund this and draw a, an arts community Amen. Uh, and yep. and and he said, and then you'd have your your paybacks essentially to. This is what they're doing right now in a, a, a fair amount of the Eastern Bloc of Europe. Okay. They really they give you the money to shoot your film there as long as it's enough money, and then you owe them that money back. But if you don't 
if your film doesn't make, I mean, they will hold you to it. But if your film doesn't make all the money back, it's almost like a, a write-off write because they bring all the money there and mm -hmm. all the commerce there. Right. Um, People and, still earn and, and, some and, income there. Yeah. And they still that, got and paid off I think there's this this there's uh, tourism too there, it's coming a, with not this. only that there's this unquantifiable bit, and mm -hmm. I don't. I, it's a poor comparison, but you look at New Zealand and the mm -hmm. huge films that are over there, and this tourism that goes into yep. the, you're, you're advertising an area, yep. and we're advertising a city that. Really, yeah, has had a bad reputation for I, I a long time, that. and now we got this opportunity to. Yeah. No, this is what we're about now. This is how much we've changed. Right? Come see yes. us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the idea that the too. place Batman and Superman fought. Like, I do love going to the train station to yeah, say, yeah, yeah. "Hey, Absolutely. this right. is where yes. they fought." Yeah. And yeah, it's just a cool thing to see. Yeah, I mean, it is. Those little things. Shia LaBeouf ran through here with a with a torch. <laughs> you know, those, right. Megatron chasing through. Yes. So, what what are your favorite films as far as? Uh, you know, when you start this creative process of writing, what, what genre do you think? Because you, you've kind of dabbled uh, in kind of a, a wide range of films. What's your favorite? What do you prefer to start with? Or is it just I, whatever you get a I bug think for you? I want to tell a great story. Okay. I think that's the, the uh, you know, I, I think I, I fell in love with when we made Bennett Song and Bennett Song Holiday because they're so heartwarming. Uh, I mean, I have a grown man in tears at the theater being like, you know, that I was... I had to hold him a little bit. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. Well, I'm always <laughs> looking for a cuddle. Oh, no. No, but... I, but I, Absolutely. But no. Because yeah. it's so relatable that sure. the, the, the conversation with with my daughter about like that that I'm doing this for you. Right. And and for, for, for people to understand how valuable we are because we live in a society right now where an Instagram like is so much more, more important... important than, you know, somebody that actually cares about you saying, right. you know what, you're doing a really good job. Yeah, amen. Um, yeah. So, no, and, 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 and if you ever want to find out how mean and ill-spirited people can be, go on IMDb and look at the reviews. I mean, oh, yeah. you, you know, oh. it's... It, it, I, Keep or, more courage, my friend. Or read your YouTube yeah, comments. Yes. Or read your YouTube comments. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The, the, and, and I think as, as, a, as a creative, you got to remember that you're not as good as your best one and you're not as bad as your worst one. Worst one, one. no, uh, right. Yeah, so so kind of like, yeah. you yep. know. Well, like I always say is, you know, people won't go on, if you have a good meal at a restaurant, mm -hmm. you usually don't feel the need to go on and post a review. But no. if you have a bad one, you do feel the need. So it's yeah. almost, you know, it, you yeah. got to kind of take it. Like the good reviews aren't there because people just enjoyed it. They yeah. didn't, they didn't I mean, want to yeah, take absolutely. the time. Yeah, they, yeah. they liked it and moved on. Uh, you know, the negative ones are just, uh, yeah. just a little more trolling. Dream project. Oh, God. Uh, I love sci-fi. I would love to do something. I, I was have hoping you were going to say right that. Now. I was hoping you were going to say that. I have that. a script right now that I've already said. I, I refuse to do exclusive. this. <laughs> I refuse to do this with less money than. Okay, fair. And, uh, yeah. and it is, uh, did you see Identity? Oh, with Q yes. Love Identity. Yes. Okay. Yes. Ray Liotta, so, The Hotel. That was yes. such Cusack. a great film. Yes. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so, so that idea I love. And, and obviously you've seen Inception. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, um, yes. Not so, as big of a fan, but I won't get into yes. that. Yeah, it's, it's a, yeah, I mean, it, uh, I think... Uh, I think it's really cool, but I think you almost have to have a pen and paper yeah. when you're watching the well, movie. Yeah. No, to all right, no, what level are we on now? Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. But uh, but it, so in this in this script that I first of all I it, it was the best script I have ever written. Okay. Um, and then a friend of mine, Brett Miller, who's been my AD and all kinds of stuff, but he's like, you know, I'm a professional screenwriter. I've written and optioned stuff to Hollywood. You have great stories and really good scripts, but I think I can tighten them up. So I'm like... So you fired him? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> tighten them up. Tighten them up. Yeah, no. Yes. Yeah, no. So I'm like, hey, I want to see what you can do. Sure. So, so write, here's the script, uh, you know, rewrite it. and he This is back. a sci-fi project that you're talking yeah. about? Yeah, okay. okay. So he comes back and, and I read the script through. And on the first revision, it blew my mind oh and, nice and, and it did you was make like, major changes or was yeah, just so uh, the the one character that i didn't feel that we necessarily had to be that emotionally involved and tied into sure he made him very compelling uh i started out the story with him losing his mind completely uh, -huh. uh and and kill a bunch of people uh which Sounds it's like my hard, type of movie. It's hard oh, no. to pull for them after that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so he oh, said, for the guy. So you're he able said, to write that into, that says something. That's, yeah. yeah. So he said, Let, let's have him not go that far. Okay. Let's have him, let's have him dance the line where you're like, I still yeah. like him, but I don't know if I should. And, 
Is this the right That's thing? a compelling character in almost anything, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That yeah. is the Bruce Willis yes. character. Yes, amen. Yeah. Uh, or yeah. Sizemore, for that yep. matter. The Absolutely. The anti-hero. Yes. yes. Uh, so, so he did that, and then he did another thing that I loved. Instead of the story being his and, uh, and how it affected all these other people, the main character became the main uh, uh, behavioral uh, scientist that actually tracks him and how the impact is in her life from... <sighs> This. Oh, that's an interesting oh, perspective. So, Very interesting perspective. Yeah, yeah so yeah, it, absolutely. It, the script just went from being uh, the best I've ever written to now it's the best script I've ever read. So that's your dream project right that now. That is I'm my the, dream project that's right on, now. Now, who do you have envisioned? Uh, is there like Are dream we too people much? you'd like to work with? <laughs> no, I, uh, well, I've had Jake Busey uh, on awesome. two films. Love Jake Busey. Uh, and and uh, it's something has happened. Especially uh, he was in Stranger Things. I always, you know, oh Stranger yeah, Things, but I love Stranger Frighteners with him in it. Oh, Obviously, yeah. everyone knows Starship Troopers, but yes. Frighteners, oh, I thought yes. he was amazing in yes. that. Yeah, so he's he was signed to be in uh, in Abeyance, Eternal Code, the character that Scout plays. That wow. was his. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. And uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, they ended up on uh, set for Stranger Things with an accident. And his dates get pushed. Oh, and I'm geez, like, I'm yeah. not going to be a jerk and hold you to my contract. No. Go oh, that's do awesome. your I do guys thing. Say, that was my only disappointment in Stranger Things that season is mm. I expected, I really wanted more of his character. Like, yeah. I thought they were going to do something with it a little more than what they did. And he just, can't, like, they didn't really expand on it. Yeah, they didn't. I was no. really, once they I saw he was on it, I'm like, yes, better. Jake Busey. And mm-hmm. yeah, they didn't, they, they kind of wasted the character, which is unfortunate because yeah. he's so good. He yeah. is. Yeah, I think I think he's very underrated, but I also know that he he doesn't. I think he would love to get a shot at a leading man type of sure. role, and I think he could pull it off. He probably do at this point. Right? I think so yeah. too. Yeah. I think I definitely think so. But he's such a good villain. Yeah. It's like how do you? It's like Richard Tyson. He's like, can I play a good guy? You know? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, next movie. <laughs> I promise yeah. the next one. Yeah. It's, always, it's always movie. the next it's one. That last yeah. movie. It's always the next one. Yes. Uh, but, but they're just so good at yeah. it. Um, and then right now, uh, Sean Whalen really has my... Uh, I've just watched so much of him. He was also on uh, The People Under the Stairs. He was in Twister. Uh, he's an acting coach, and I watched okay. some of his videos, and he's like, this guy is super smart. He's a really, really talented actor, um, and I could really see him in, in this film. Uh, Corbin that I just worked sure, with yeah, that's yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. as the second uh, uh, behavioral scientist, because Corbin, can, he comes across very, very, uh, very tight. He's a... Uh, he's, uh, uh, like he can easily lawyer, obviously. You sure, know, no, uh, absolutely. He plays he that part. Play, in that, yeah, I yeah, get what authority you're yeah. figure. Yes. He knows what yes. he's doing. Yes, um, but he still has that thing that makes you care about him. Sure. Um, so, so he w- would also be on my list for that movie. Jan, I uh, have a great role for Jan in that, where he get to play a, a, a real prick. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Jan, but I know yeah, you're a, good at it. Yeah, you're so good at it. I think that's a it. compliment. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. Uh, but yeah, so I have that and. Uh, um, uh, uh, Lorreen Landon, who was in Agramon's Gate, who's amazing. Like every time I watch the film, I have goosebumps for her scene. Oh, okay, wow. nice. It just, All right. She just, and I remember recording it, and you can just tell your whole crew stops breathing. Oh wow! They wow. just go. You get the whole feel from everyone behind the camera. And yeah, you just get it nice. And yeah. she just frees. The, the whole crew just... You forget to say cut. No, yeah, 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 you almost do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. No, her, that says her, something, though. Her That's and a, Jan, absolutely. their exchanges were just, like, so electric. Uh, but I have a really, really good role for her as well uh, in there. Uh, the tricky thing in this one, I'm going to need a 12-year-old boy. Who's and got some chops. that's going to be tricky. Yeah. Yeah. He, this, he's going to have to deliver, like, really strong acting. Um which is the young version of the... And that's hard. Question. That's probably... Kids right. are hard to, to, in anything, right? I imagine I, I visual mean, effects, too, will be tricky if you're doing, like, yes. a sci-fi. That, that's... So the, so this, the, the... I don't know what I should just say about the story. But so how, how we'll pretty much so it is, uh, <laughs> he, this, this guy has multiple personalities. Okay, um, and that's... Yeah, and, phenomenal. Uh, and, he did mention identity. He yeah. does, yes. So, so in this film, essentially, these behavioral scientists say... For all these personalities, believes themselves to be real, which means if you can kill them, you can mm. cure them. Ooh. Ooh. So that's essentially like the plot. That's so how do plot. we get him down to into one. his head 
down to just himself. Wow. So that's the that's, that's the a that's the journey. That's a great God. Wow. Well done. Yeah. I like it. I like I it. I get yeah. a feeling that's going to get edited out in this in some place. No? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. He won't let that yeah. be in the final. Yeah, yeah. Like, we're not going to do that. No. Yeah. That's, uh, okay. So another passion of yours, uh, mm -hmm. MMA. You Love. host some. You 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 did MMA fighting, and yeah. now you host MMA fighting. Uh, out here in Southgate, Michigan, correct? Yeah, yeah. Probably fill out the viewers in. Yeah, I, I we love this it. And we this are is... MMA fans ourselves. Yes. So, and this is actually, you guys, something that we kind of found out tonight. Yeah. Very close to home I knew for us. Before. Yeah. So yeah. I, well, I didn't. Yes. <laughs> so to get the opportunity to talk about this tonight, please do, because this right. is cool to us. Yeah, it's uh, it's called Warrior Wednesdays. I've been calling the action, hosting the show for uh, WXC uh, probably seven, eight years. Holy cow! So it's been a long time. Uh, we have. The matchmaker's name is Mike Pedinelli. This guy, I don't know what he does, but he finds these fights that I'm a retired pro. I look at some of these fights and go, oh, it's a mismatch. This doesn't look yeah. good. And he's like, oh, hardly trust me. He I'm like, all right. And then it ends up being one of the best fights I've wow. ever seen. So he's just got an eye All and talent. The time. That's a skill, All right? That's an eye. That's a that's a that's something that two someone guys just that, has, two right? Two guys that run the the Norbert Pastor and and, uh, and uh, Mike Pedinelli. They're both fighters first, so they they go to go the to gym, the, visit, okay. kind of train and okay. and watch people. So he gets this um, amazing matchups every time. So finally. About a year ago, UFC Fight Pass says, you guys have amazing shows. We want to buy your shows, put them that's on. That's huge. Oh, that's massive. So, yeah. so, so we started getting our shows on, and then they came and said, you guys are killing it. We want you to be an original show on every month. So... Wow. Would you mind ho having having shows yeah. last Wednesday of every month? Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's viewership yeah. too of, of UFC Fight Pass. It's like ten bucks a month, and you yeah. get to watch. It's a good. It's, oh, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's if you it's watch not, if you watch martial arts of any kind. Uh, Way worth your. I, I, like my problem is I'll sit down and watch them. Like I'm just going to turn this on for a minute and watch this. Oh, you sit there. And it's like an hour and a half yeah. later. I'm like, oh darn. Yeah. 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 Uh, that that that's me too. Especially when they have good fights. Absolutely. Which is. Uh, I think right now UFC struggling with their identity because yes. how many they've how, lost you have some no of their... Ronda, you have no Ronda, you've lost you know what, so that's, many I, of the guys. But you know what, that's an opportunity to rebuild at that point I too, right? Feel though, uh, I don't want to talk too bad of Dana White because mm -hmm. obviously he built such mm -hmm. a great yeah. empire with the UFC. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. But I do feel like I'm, I, he's catered, unfortunately, to the wrong personalities that I think you're starting to see the backlash. You know, like, like the Conor McGregor, the oh, yeah. John yes, Jones, is... these guys have kind of ruined it and what yeah. they've done personally, but he still kind of caters to it. And you I wonder, would make the mm -hmm. argument it, that in any type of this it? type yeah. of sport, uh, he is feeding it, but I sometimes think that this is it's kind of needed because still in the end it is entertainment. Mm -hmm. And you have to have some personalities. You have to have something that people flock to or hate yeah. in order to... Yeah. Honestly, I, listen, I've, I I've reached a point. I, I like sides. to see people shake hands, smile it out for the, the pictures before the fight, yeah. and understand it's a sport. Yeah. You know, I don't need to see watch That's football fair. teams argue and get in each other's personal lives and bash each other like that no. to watch a good game. I feel that way with fighting, with fighting though. It's a too. sport. Yeah. Like, I want to see a good sportsman. So, has it. MMA killed boxing? I hate to switch that away. No, but I don't think so. You don't I, think so? I, I really don't. I think boxing killed boxing. Oh, okay. I really do. I think, right. I think boxing promoters killed boxing because it's so hard to get a real good fight anymore. I, Everybody has padded fake records and they get, like, a guy who's 15 and 0. Was it the and, money that killed it? Um, I think the promoters protecting, Tainting. yeah, so they protect certain fighters because they want yeah. to have a brand and they end up, and I, I see it right now, we have a, some local guys running uh, uh, boxing events in, in Michigan and it's like, these are jokes of a fight. I'm not, <laughs> no, no, I, and that's and, what I was asking. They're, they're like, hey, I mean, Harley, do you want to come? Yeah, we'll make you a special. No. Harley, we're don't. the same age, roughly. Yep. You know what I mean? And you sit down, and I remember watching Friday Night yep. Fights. I mean, that they're was a thing to me. They I'd were sit amazing. And watch, they were amazing. And then it just seems like what overnight they changed. What happened to Hagler and Leonard and yeah, like it, exactly. the real But even the kids fights. coming up, and you yep. sit and watch Friday Nights, which was on regular TV, and now that's just gone. Yep. But you can sit watching an MMA fight that you would never expect oh. to be anything. Yeah. The undercards are amazing. It is the best fight you see. The undercards yeah. are amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you you go watch the ones that are on TV. They'll most of the time they'll be the best fights of the night. Absolutely, right. Yeah. right. And so, now this is every this is the last Wednesday last of every Wednesday month. Of every month. And where does it take place? Uh, at the Southgate uh, Crystal Gardens. In Crystal Southgate. Gardens. Yeah. And we're saying the ticket admissions between twenty twenty five dollars starting at uh, seven. Yeah, unless PM. you want to sit right at cage side, then okay. I, I, Get I some know, blood and sweat uh, on you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll be honest with you though, watching a live event, especially when it's a higher level of fighters. 
it's just you it's like um uh, have you ever been to a, like a, a car race absolutely. or something? Oh, yes. And yes. it's like, holy, I didn't even know. Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, fighting is a lot like that. Like you go the first time and, and it's the, the carnage and it's so close to you and the blood and like we get blood on us every really? every fight. Wow. We get splattered, you know, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Uh, sometimes a lot of it. But yeah, I mean, so. There's an energy in a live yeah. event. That's why oh, people yeah. still yeah. go. Right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and it's the same thing. Me and my wife have been to a bunch of concerts lately. Man, go out, go to yes. the concerts, yes. oh, go yes. to the live yeah. events, yeah. go watch theater, go like go see, go to the Renaissance uh, festival, whatever. Fair. Get, get, get some yeah. culture, like, but go and get experience a turkey it. Yeah. Get, get, get a turkey and, 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 and engage with real human beings. We don't have to be here yeah. all the right. time. Amen. No, yes. understood. Uh, I mean, Unless I, I, we're watching one of your films. Right. And you can sit here all <laughs> yeah. you want. Right, yeah. Well, you mean, like, go to Imagine Theater. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yes, yes. August 30th. Yeah, August 30th. Yeah. I do yeah. feel that we're robbing the next generation, though, because they watch a lot of their movies like that. Well, you know what? We do, and I think, like you said, this, though it's opening doors... Mm -hmm. to see this film and we're in a golden age of television yeah. and, and entertainment in general but like you said there is a little bit of that that you're missing in that yeah. big cinema and that's you know so wrapping back to Eternal Code you, yeah. uh, obviously it's at Royal Oak Imagine Theater uh, and, and other select uh, Imagine Theaters mm -hmm. and then Video On Demand uh, what service will it be oh. So Vudu, Amazon, uh, on your Xfinity, AT&T, all of it. Wow, yeah. nice. That's Excellent. huge. Yeah. That's awesome. So is it for my favorite time? Are we it's there? our favorite time. <laughs> our, our, we, have a, we have a fun game for you here. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, it's five questions to see if you achieve attacker status. So Ooh. these are very challenging questions. Uh, I hope you're ready for them. Uh, I don't know if you've seen these before, but we're going to run this through <laughs> again. Uh, so first up, first question, it's, it's uh, what's better? We're going to give you an original and a remake, and then you get to decide which one was better. Oh, uh, the original yeah. is Dancing with Dancing with Wo or Dances with Wolves, excuse me, uh -huh. and the remake is Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> I love Dances with Wolves. <laughs> so Dances with Wolves over Avatar. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. All right. All right. That wins. That wins. All, All right. right. Number two, best monster movie. Best monster. Mobster. Mobster. Oh, sorry, mobster. mobster. It could be oh. monster. I like monster movies. I like mobster. He's, he's kind oh, of yeah, he's kind of got that feel. Yeah. All right. Best, best Mob mobster movie. Love Goodfellas. Yes. I'd have to pick Over Goodfellas. Godfather. I know that's crazy, but okay. I, I, I agree. have to. I'm 100% right. right. with it, But okay. it's, it's like this. It's okay. so all right, close. All right, but the violence but Goodfellas, of you God can pop in and rewatch. So yes. good, like Godfather, you need to commit. Yes, I mean, you do. Yeah. Okay, all right, fair. Yes. I agree with that. Because right. ha if I catch Goodfellas on, it can be halfway through. I'll right. watch and the end. And you can watch fair. it. Yes. All right. All right. Good I agree. Father, I'll... Uh, yeah. Do I really want to commit right now? Well, yes. yes. <laughs> next time I watch the whole thing. <laughs> right. All right. Number three. Uh, who is a better principal? Mr. Belding or George Feeney? Mr. Belding. Like, he's my... <laughs> Close friend at this point. Does anyone know I who George Feeney is? No, no, who's George? No. Boy Meets World. Oh, Boy Meets World. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. oh, all right. But I have to pick Dennis. No, absolutely. <laughs> all right, number four. What would you rather pilot, Airwolf or Knight Rider? Oh. It's rough, isn't it? <laughs> I'll have to do Knight Rider. I agree, right? right. Yeah, no, so I'm like, yeah. I was going to sit here and have a conversation. The only thing is, all cars talk now. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yes. Right, so, no, absolutely. Yeah. Mr. Feeney gets a win because he was the voice of yeah. Knight Rider. Oh, yes, right. yes, 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 yes. So, uh, all right, and your final question. This ties into the MMA passion. Right. Who would win in a fight, Conor McGregor or Mickey O'Neill? Do you know Mickey O'Neill? From Mickey Snatch, from... Brad Pitt. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, he couldn't lose. I'd, I'd have to go with, with uh, Mickey. Yeah, I'd all say right. yeah. Wow. I'd say Mickey. You so just you, hate Connor. That's all. <laughs> you, had a tag. <laughs> you had attack or status. Thank you. Thank you. For that, right. uh, you will get an attack on show glass for That's coming on That's cleaner than show. the one he's yes, currently we'll using. Yes, clean yes one as here. always. Harley, this has been awesome having you on here. I, Literally, I wish one you nothing of my but absolute favorite interviews. Yes. I really do appreciate nothing this. Nothing but success for you. Your hard work's paying off, and I can't wait to see where it goes. We will be following. We will be yeah. at the premiere over at the Royal Oak. We'll be following. We'll be supporting you as you follow through with this. So absolutely. Awesome. Anything you ever needed of us, we're here for you. Yes. Awesome. Yes, thank so you. Thank and you for coming and, and I'm going to hook you up with some Cabresto tequila. Oh, I would love that. Yes, please. Yes. Absolutely. Sony, Cabresto, they need it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and everyone watching, make sure you like and subscribe. You don't want to miss any future episodes of the show. It's only getting bigger and better. Right? Always. Always. <laughs> nice. As always, I'm Robbie. And I'm Jay Marsh. And this is Attack on Show.